morning, everyone, and welcome to the presentation of the 2024 Pilot Innovation Challenge winners. The Innovation Challenge is a contest that NAB runs every year that invites startups to come to the NAB show. This year, we had an incredibly competitive field with more than 20 applications, and these are the three best startups uh, as selected by our panel of judges across the broadcast industry and within the National Association of Broadcasters. Our three winners this year are Amira Labs, uh, a that produces visionary AI-centric and cloud-based broadcasting solutions, AudioShake, which opens up content workflows with audio separation AI, and core communities uh, that allows broadcast organizations to easily create thriving online communities. All three of these companies are presenting in the Propel Me area on the floor just over there, and uh, I'm going to call them each up uh, to give a short presentation about their products, starting with Amira. Hey everyone, nice to meet you today. I'm Kyle Seuss. I'm one of the co-founders of Amira Labs. I have Stefan Cardenas with me, our other co-founder. So without further ado, let's get going. Sure. Hey, how, how are you? Um, all right, so we focus on live translation for live broadcasts. That's specifically language detection, language transcription, and, uh, sorry, uh, detection, transcription, and translation. Sorry. A... Uh, so right now there are about over 7,000 languages spoken in the world. Uh, 80% of the world's population uses about 130%, uh, 130 languages. The top languages spoken globally account for billions of people worldwide. So that's billions of content being produced uh, by just average people, right? Events happening all over the world. Stuff on your phone, on Instagram, uh, stuff being shown on TV, so on and so forth. Uh, however, the number of people that actually speak multiple languages is not that high. Only about 50% of the population speaks more than one language. 25% uh, speak more than three languages, and only about 10 to 15% uh, percent of people actually speak more than three languages. So we're starting to see a lot of you know uh, content being produced in multiple languages. Not a lot of people who can actually um, speak these languages, detect them, translate them. And the amount of content being produced abroad is actually increasing a lot every year. The rate of growth of content being produced in developing countries, for example, is a lot higher than the rate of content being produced um, in the Western world, like the U.S. or in Europe. So languages that aren't represented that well right now, for example, maybe like Chinese or Thai or even Spanish in certain places, uh, being able to actually understand that content and process it is highly important to the broadcasting sector going forward. And so a major challenge in this globalized world of content that we live in is how can broadcasters monitor every channel from anywhere in the world all at once? So this is quite a unique challenge, especially in newsrooms and in central broadcast facilities, because you simply just do not have the amount of people on hand that could translate all of these. With the span of languages in the world, you simply can't have a staff that could just be on the spot translating content in real time. And this is a real challenge, not just in the world of breaking news and live sports, but in just telling global stories. And so how do we solve this problem, given that this can't be solved purely with just human effort, because no one could just understand 130 languages on their own. And the solution for this is applying AI to live audio monitoring. And so the way we do this is first, we automatically detect the language being spoken in the live feed. Then we caption that language and transcribe it in accordance with what's being spoken. So it's as true to the narration as possible. And then the third step is to translate that. So if there are feeds coming in from anywhere in the world, you need to be able to have it be in your own language so that you understand what's being spoken to retell this story to your own audiences. And so this is basically language AI-based services at scale. The at scale part is incredibly crucial because there's no way to do this on a piece by piece basis. When you're a broadcaster like CNN, for example, and you have 1,300 points around the world that you're sourcing channels from, you simply can't have a staff of 1,300 people doing this all at once. 
Um, so the at scale part is truly a critical piece. And as we'll see here, this is a live multi-viewing feed that CNN actually uses, for example. So the language is being detected, it's being captioned, and it's being translated all in real time. And so with these 12 feeds right here, given that we could do this at scale cost effectively and with optimized compute, a broadcaster could have all of these capabilities delivered to themselves in a more cost-effective way than it takes to caption just a single feed in English. So that's the power of what we're doing. This is just a small example, but this could easily be scaled from 12 to 24 to 48 to hundreds and thousands of channels. And so the way that we're solving this problem is that we have both cloud and on-prem optimized solutions. So if you want to run our own language models in the cloud, that's perfectly acceptable. So if you're running on AWS or Google Cloud or Azure, that completely works for you. But the other critical piece is many broadcasters do have their own hardware in-house. And that is where you get the best long-term cost effectiveness is by using your own hardware. And we've also fine-tuned our own AI models so that as content is being produced from many niche languages around the world, such as those that Stefan mentioned, we're able to continuously adapt in real time by ingesting more and more language data to make sure we're getting very good accuracy, very good results, and most importantly, you know, good translations to retell all of these global stories as they're being delivered from around the world. So a prime example of this is actually um, about a year ago, there was an earthquake in Turkey. And at a major broadcaster in the U.S., a real challenge was that, first of all, everyone was running around in the office thinking, who knows Turkish, right? And it turns out they were actually a bit misled in that regard because they were actually not speaking Turkish. They were speaking Kurdish. Because it turns out in Turkey, there's more languages being spoken than just Turkish. So if you're trying to deliver breaking news in real time to audiences in the U.S., such as Turkish nationals living here, and you're trying to translate it from Turkish to English, and you're getting the wrong language because you're just manually taking a guess, well, you're sort of late to the game then in delivering this breaking news. And no one wants that to happen because in a 24-7 live news world, it's all about being first, being responsive, and being accurate with how you tell these stories. And currently, we're also integrating with TAG Video Systems, which is a major monitoring company. So we're applying our AI technology at scale to broadcasters and making sure we integrate with your current systems so that the workflows that you're using today don't need to be, you know, much if they don't have to be changed very much. So you're basically able to just get the benefits without adding more overhead work. And so another breakthrough that we're taking advantage of is the compute side, as I mentioned before. So traditionally, many of these hardware-based models that have existed for years have run on just pure CPUs. And to be honest, CPUs are sort of last generation. To get the most benefit, you have to look towards the latest chips as well, such as GPUs, graphics processing units, such as those NVIDIA produces. I'm sure all of you probably have seen the rise of NVIDIA lately, as well as TPUs, tensor processing units. These are some of the latest chipsets that Google Cloud is producing. And then even on the horizon, we have things like LPUs, language processing units which are chips specifically oriented to dealing with live translation and language processing. And so as we're making these improvements over time, we could rely on many public data sets available, such as Common Voice and others. And so what's next on the horizon? We have speech synthesis, which is producing text-to-speech, as well as AI monitoring agents that are proactively monitoring your feeds. And so to just close.
This is the intersection of AI and language mastery. Our API marries your diverse language video feeds with cutting-edge machine learning technologies. Але нам точно вже ніколи не буде страшно. І ніколи не буде Communication is enriched, linguistic divides are bridged, and content flows seamlessly. The horizon of possibilities in content creation and broadcasting expands exponentially. Imagine local broadcasters across the world now able to monitor and understand live feeds in real time transcending language barriers to bring the most relevant and engaging content to their audiences. Radio broadcasters can seamlessly monitor commercials and content, ensuring that every message is clear, every story is understood. But the true transformation begins when we unlock the door to AI and machine learning and content enrichment and monitoring. By understanding audio in real time and at an unprecedented scale, we enable the creation of AI agents capable of listening to and analyzing feeds from every corner of the world, 24-7. This isn't just about monitoring more, it's about understanding better, creating smarter, and reaching further than ever before. While an individual can only process a finite amount of content, AI expands our capabilities infinitely. Now, content creators can craft stories with a depth and breadth previously unimaginable. We're not just breaking down barriers, we're building bridges. Bridges that connect ideas, cultures, and stories on a scale never seen before. Welcome to the future of broadcasting, powered by understanding, driven by innovation. Join us at Amira Labs. Let's make the world's chorus harmonious for everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. Again, I'm Kyle Seuss, and this is Stefan Karnas, and we're from Amira Labs. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, sir. There we go. Hi, I'm Jessica Powell. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Audio Shake. Uh, and what we do is we separate sound. Um, starting with a really obvious statement, sound is obviously crucial to media content, right? Um, but the complexity and the nuance, the richness of that sound can also make it really, really difficult to work with across a broad range of AV workflows. So if we even just think about right now, all this crowd noise, for example, or think about music that appears in a film or you're filming a red carpet interview and there's music there, uh, sound effects, all kinds of sound, like entertainment sound is really complex sound. And you can't always get at those different layers of that sound to then do things with it. And that's where we come in. So Audio Shake separates audio in order to make it interactive, accessible, useful. Basically anything where you want to be able to edit audio, that's where we come in. And just to make this kind of concrete, I have a lot of demos here because I know it seems a little abstract to talk about separating sound. So let's say we were talking about a piece of music. Um, and just to, so that we all have it, here's a very quick. I don't care what the future holds for me. Now, let's say we wanted to turn that into a karaoke track or a remix or any number of things. You may, might need to sync license. You might want to get rid of or you want to isolate, say, the vocal track. So. I don't care what the future holds for me. And there are lots of scenarios, of course, today when audio is being recorded in any kind of media workflow where that is all getting tracked out. But there are also a ton where it's not. And that's that's what we do. We use deep learning to source separate or sound separate these different tracks or streams or the most technical term would be the stems. So once you can separate the different layers of sound, you can power all kinds of different workflows that you otherwise couldn't today, or you can make them better. And we'll get into some of these um, in just a bit. So we work with a really broad range of companies across the media space. This is just a handful, um, but ranging from streaming through to transcription, localization, uh, music, and more. Um, and one thing I should also add, because my slides seem to disappear, is uh, we are state-of-the-art across all of our separation models. Um, we won Times, uh, one of Time's most innovative companies of the year, uh, and Sony has run a contest um, to find the best separation technology across media content, and we uh, also won that, beating all the big tech companies that entered. So let's talk about film, TV, UGC. 
So let's start with actually sounds you don't want. Um, again, maybe you want to remove this crowd. Maybe you want to remove wind, or perhaps you want to remove music. So if we think about music, um, copyrighted music can cause all kinds of issues. So say that you are filming your sports broadcaster and you're filming something in training season. You have a ton of music blaring in the background as the players practice. You don't want to share that to social or to your channel because you're all of a sudden going to have all those fines attached to that. Um, similarly, let's say you've got uh, old TV shows that you want to put onto streaming, but you don't have that all tracked out. You now have a whole bunch of music that in order to license it, the cost would be so prohibitive that you just keep it off of streaming. So that's where we come in. Here's an example with a sports broadcast. Um, hopefully you'll be able to hear. First, we're going to play the original with the music, and then we're going to remove it, but we're, we're going to retain the, the dialogue, I think the commentator audio, and the sound of the puck on the ice and everything else. It's just the music we're removing. Time. Shell was great with the with the stick in terms of the way she defended. They didn't give Montreal a whole lot of room to play with. And once again, the goaltender Schroeder was just terrific. Marine Schroeder. Time. Shell was great with the with the stick in terms of the way she defended. They didn't give Montreal a whole lot of room to play with. And once again, the goal. Great. So you get the idea. Um, what about speech separation? So if we think about, for example, transcription. Transcription technology today works pretty well. In fact, it works really great if it's just me and someone else speaking and we're in a relatively quiet environment. But the moment you have crowd, when we have music and effects and so forth, transcription can go a bit haywire. Um, and so we can come in and we can clean speech before it goes through ASR to boost transcription accuracy rates. And a lot of the localization companies that we work with report anywhere from a 25 to 40 percent increase in transcription accuracy when they first clean that audio um, with Audio Shake. Uh, this would also be relevant for, um, say, uh, voice synthesis. You want really, really clean speech before you're going to do any kind of voice cloning work. So here's a really quick example where you're going to have a pretty extreme isolation, right? Just you're, you're just trying to get really clean speech before it goes through ASR. Did you, was there a hangover at all from last season, the result and the, the coming to a stadium like this? No, I don't think so. I think, I think you know, we have a new team this year, different players, uh, and it's a year ago, you know. I think one thing that I can say, we've learned so much, you know, since last year. And, of course, you could imagine, let's say you didn't actually need this for ASR. What you want is simply to lower that crowd noise. You want to keep the presence and all that natural sound, but you don't want it to overpower what, say, the commentators are saying. You would just take the other stem and lower it. So you can do all kinds of different things when you can get at these different stems. Um, next, I want to talk about m and &E separation. So when you can separate m and &E, again, a lot of environments, all that audio is getting tracked out. But there's a ton, right? If you think of catalog, archival, unscripted content, where the audio budgets are not as high or it's older content and you don't have all of the stems. So if you can separate the M&E and then put the dub on top of it, you now have a much more truer to the original localization than if you were just doing what people have done for years, which is silence the audio and then put, say, the Japanese or the Turkish version on top. Um, so the very first project we ever worked on was with the iconic show Doctor Who, where all they had was the original with the director's commentary on top, the music and the effects all on one track. Solar stack. Precisely. There's something trapped in the stack, Noah. And one of the things that we see a lot of right now is uh, you have workflows like that Doctor Who one, which is where we are um, separating the M&E, and then they are doing uh, the German dub in that case over it. You also see a lot of human AI hybrid localization workflows uh, where they are putting humans in the loop post ASR for a check on accuracy, post uh say, captioning or synthetic voice um, or the human dub. Um, and we also, I'd say that's probably the most common workflow. We also work with a few companies that are 100% AI from the point of separation through the ASR and synthetic voice. Um, but I think most, uh, the, the, the most common is actually where there's a human in the loop at each of those steps. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you was multi-speaker separation. So, uh, a lot of speaker separation today happens primarily for transcription workflows um, or an assistant technology. 
there it's really you're collecting the metadata. You don't need the output in high resolution. Um, but what we're very focused on, and which is a different kind of task, is can you separate speakers and output them in high resolution? There's all kinds of editing tasks, localization being one, podcast editing being another, where you want to be able to edit the different uh, voice streams or stems. Um, so we're working on that and also things like speaker overlap and speaker ID. Uh, and here is a quick example um, of men arguing about sports. But Don't he's above a Colangelo now. level. In other words, he Don't understands it enough to... If I you said, you said it's all right fan. to lose on purpose. You said it's all right to if, lose yeah, on purpose yeah, of course and it's advertise that to the fans. Who doesn't it's know that? It's perfectly okay. Don't explain it away now. Don't explain it away. You said you said it was all right to lose on purpose. You said it's all right to lose on purpose and advertise that to the fans. It's perfectly okay. But he's above a Colangelo level. In other words, he understands enough to... They go on like that for five minutes, by the way. Um, but we'll cut that demo short. Uh, we're accessible in a bunch of different ways. We have an on-demand platform. That's something that'll say um, a lot of marketing, um, uh, music companies, and so forth will use. We also have uh, APIs that can run in your cloud, um, and we have streaming-capable SDKs for live scenarios as well. Um, we're here at NAB, just around the corner there. Um, thank you to the, the Pilot Innovation Challenge um, for inviting us. We also have a booth in the South Hall, and uh, our demos are on display at the AWS booth here, um, and on the localization side, Yellow Umbrella and Una as well. Thank you so much. Audio shakes technology in the hands of our spouses could be terrifying. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, good morning. My name is Paul Wagner. I'm the CEO and founder of Cord Communities. And we're here to solve broadcast challenges, the, the most obvious one being the first party data crisis that is soon to come. So anyone here has probably read some of these reports, but with the demise of third-party cookies, the broadcast industry in particular is vulnerable, um, even more vulnerable than the print industry. And a lot of that is because people are accustomed to broadcast content, whether on domain or on air, being completely free. And it also doesn't require any form of authentication. So the big challenge is, well, how do you solve for that? You can't just put up a paywall on a broadcaster's website. No one's going to convert because we're not accustomed to that. And the other thing is broadcasters in particular, they don't, you know, actually no media really owns its audience anymore, right? The audience is really sort of leased from the big social platforms, Facebook, Google, Insta, right? And so to gain access to those audiences, you're paying an external source to sort of lease access to those people. And as everyone knows, whether you're a broadcaster or a small business owner, the costs to engage anymore are absolutely skyrocketing. Pay-per-click costs, et cetera, are going through the roof. So here's what we do, and we don't just do this for broadcasts. Quite literally, anyone sitting in front of me could use Cord on their own websites. So the, the reach is pretty incredible here. But what we do when we're installed is we make it all about you, your brand, your audience, and the way you engage with your uh, customers and audiences. This also serves to basically allow for first-party transactions. So what we do is deploy a full community on your domain, right? And that can be uh, really completely flexible as to what that community is all about. And I'll show you some examples here quickly. But if you're a broadcaster, this is significant on the revenue side because you only have a finite number of ad-ready pages. But if you've got a community with 20,000 thriving members, you've now got 20,000-plus additional ad-ready pages to serve content on, which is a big deal. Um, and, again, all of this is on your own website uh, and well, under your brand. The platform is also fully capable of live events, streaming, et cetera, pre-roll, post-roll, sponsorship opportunities. And part of the secret sauce is we have a light version called Cord Connect which, again, any one of you could use yourselves. But our broadcast partners get to sell that into their local DMA uh, exclusively, and that creates a localized ad network. The other thing that's obviously a huge concern for any organization at scale is moderation. And fortunately, we've got a solution for that as well. 
we leverage artificial intelligence, truly not in terms of like a, a marketing gimmick. This is actual AI that is looking through all of the assets, content posted into a community and can immediately identify content that's going to be challenging. That content is then automatically removed. So in terms of ease of deployment, uh, we've solved for that as well. The other thing is, look, my, my kids, for example, I, they're not going to watch broadcast news. It, it isn't going to happen. The way they engage content is radically different than us, right? We're, of course, even in that flux right now as well, where we're engaging content through multiple devices. The fact is, that means the audiences are starting to gradually go down on the broadcast side. This is a terrific way to engage audiences on your own terms, on your own domain, and drive new audience engagement and uh, revenue streams. As mentioned, you can do awesome live events on your own site. These two are a powerful opportunity to drive first-party transactions, right? Because even if the event is completely free and compelling, you can create using our platform pre-registration forms, surveys, et cetera, and now you've got another first-party uh, first party opportunity. Because this is always on and lives on your own website, it means that the engagement never stops. Whether it's the ability for your audience members to engage content that's on the screen right now, to chat with each other, to organize groups around things that they love and enjoy, that's what this is all about. And the other major thing is, this is your data. You're not leasing it from us. You're not, like, you own the data. The moment someone transacts on Cord and gives you that first party opportunity, that data is now yours and yours alone. The really exciting thing, and again, just like everyone else, we're over there. I'd love to take everyone on a quick tour. We're capable of doing high-speed data gathering. We've had customers as large as T-Mobile using our platform, generating hundreds of millions of events in real time. And so what you're seeing here, and again, I'll show you this over at the booth, is when we're installed, we're capturing rich customer insights both on your website and in the community. And what that means is we can now, in essence, start to really learn how to better target and engage your audiences. And you can see on the right-hand side, or that would be, yeah, the right for you, um, there are all sorts of interesting ways to leverage the data to create segments. And why are those segments relevant? It means that at the local level, you're able to sell advertising that is highly relevant in the local community. And you can see some examples here with one of our partners, KHQ. Um, Northern Quest Casino sponsoring Gondaga basketball. So the opportunities to monetize this are really unparalleled in the space. We also see the, the, this way of creating synergies between on-air content and the live community. 80% of the viewers, uh, television audiences, are actually carrying their mobile device with them. And often, let's face it, they're more engaged with a mobile device than what's actually happening on the TV at that time. And so by simply leveraging QR codes, I can join my local Jeopardy group and immediately start talking in real time, in this case, on the local broadcaster's website to better engage the content, to better engage each other, and again, ultimately to drive revenue to the media partner. And that is it. Wow, I came in, I think, under time. Um, we'd love to see you. Again, we're over there. Take any one of you on a live demo. We'd be thrilled to. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, and thank you again to all of our winners. Uh, please visit them all over in Propel Me, and I have little cards if you want that have short descriptions of each of them. Thank you for coming.